Hello. Uh, my name's Paul Bergen, and you can find my blog, Mars Hill, at www.paulbergin, that's P A U L B U R G I N, dot blogspot dot co dot UK. I'm continuing here a series of vlogs about political heroes of mine who I think helped change society for the better. And the one I'm doing today is perhaps unexpected for some of you, and that is the fourth president of Ireland, Erskine Hamilton Childers. Now, Erskine Childers was a pretty unique president in a number of respects. He was only one of two, I believe there are only two, the other was the first one, Douglas Hyde, who was not Roman Catholic. He was English-born, which is was also unique and still is. And he, it showed when you met him because he had a pretty striking upper-class English accent. If you met him and didn't know where he was from or who he was, you could perhaps be forgiven for assuming he came from the English home counties or the Cotswolds. In fact, he did come from... He was born in London, and he did co come from England. He, he was essentially English-born. But he did have Irish relations, and his father was the acclaimed Erskine uh, Childers, the author of The Riddle of the Sands, initially an arch-British imperialist who became very pro-Irish. He went from one section of the political pendulum at the time right through to the other, uh, to the point where he was even anti-treaty during the Irish War of Independence and he was arrested and executed for, whilst I disagree with some of his stances, very and very spurious char ch um, charges. Erskine Childers, as in the one we're talking about, uh, the younger one, was uh, at boarding school at the time, and he went to see his father in Dublin the night before he was executed. And his father made him promise, when he asked if he, he planned to go into politics, and this, his son said so. He made us some promise to shake the hands of every single person who signed his death warrant. And he did exactly that. And from both father and son, that is an incredible amount of forgiveness. At even when you look at some acts of forgiveness in the whole situation in the Irish and Northern Irish Troubles, it's just incredible. Uh, Childers soon came to move to Ireland and he, before long, in around 1938, he became elected to the Irish Parliament as a TD and he took up Irish citizenship. He later on uh, served as... Um, Minister for Posts and Telegraphs, Minister for Transport and Power, Minister for Health by the late 60s, and uh, uh, Tanaist, I think is the pronoun pronunciation, but essentially the Irish Deputy Prime Minister. In 1973, Eamon de Valera had completed his second and final term as President of Ireland, two seven-year terms after the Irish presidency. And Fina Foyle put forward Erskine Childers. There were concerns that his English background and accent might count against him. But in fact, he was over <laughs> quite popular during the campaign and was securely elected. He was president for just 16 months. And during that time, there were problems with he had with the government. The M. Cosgraves government uh, refused to have much to do with Childers than they, they could have done. Cosgrave made his 
um, appointments with the president to a minimum. These were the beginning of problems that continued under Carole Dali, uh, Childers' successor. And there was a certain degree, perhaps, of animosity between the Fina Gale uh, government towards President Childers. Childers wanted to be pretty much more, not so much of a hands-on president, I think, but pretty much more involved in Irish state affairs. As compensation, he threw himself into a whirlwind of activity. And where he was involved politically, as it turned out after his death, he was involved in peace talks on the quiet with uh, Northern Ireland. Sadly, he died in office in late 1974 from a heart attack and he was accorded a state funeral which perhaps was pretty unique by state funeral standards of Irish presidents with perhaps the exception of Eamon de Valera the following year. And it is incredible uh, the affection and regard he has held in uh, in Ireland. I think Childers, um, how he made things better for society was his amiability, his desire to reach out to people who were probably hostile towards him and his politics, but he his insistence on reaching out and his desire to work for the Irish peace process. I think being of an English background, but being Irish, um, stood Childers in very good stead in terms of his outlook. And I think some of what he did may not have been apparent na then, but helped a long way into Ireland's future, and indeed uh, Northern Ireland's future. And I think that I don't think he is looked into so much compared to perhaps other Irish presidents or politicians and I think that is a shame.